You can never forgive unless your heart forgives. You can never really give unless your heart gives. You will give and you will complain and you cause trouble unless your heart is releasing somebody they are not released. You can owe somebody for 20 years pretending you love them. Oh, I've forgiven you, but I won't, but I won't forget. It's a lie. You've not forgiven. If anything happens tomorrow, you are going back to react the same story because your heart is holding bitterness. That heart is wounded and broken. But I pray for somebody today, you will be healed by the love of God. Number one, you got to know. You got to know the love of God by experience. To know the knowledge of love. You got to know it by heart by experience it's not by mind it's not by mind the love of god is known in your heart you got to know the love of god and number two you got to grow in this love say grow in the love say grow in the love of god say grow in the love of god and number three you got to flow in the love of god say say no Say grow, say flow. Say no, say grow, say flow. Amen. You got to know it. So First John four sixteen quickly read. Please, please hurry up. First John four sixteen. First John four sixteen. First John. 4. Let's all read together. Let's go. And we have known and believed. The love that God has to us. We have known. We have known. We have known. So this month has ended. Can you say? I mean, September has ended. We're now in the month of October. Can you say, I have known. I have known. I have known. The love of God. Look at First John 4, 9. 1 John 4 9. 1 John 4 9. He said, We have believed and we have known. So, are you able to say, I have known and believed? Like John said, the love of God. If you are not able to say that, you still need to get to nice step and every other messages we have taught you during the month and go back and learn it until your heart can say I have known I have believed it in 1st John 4 9 let's all read together he said in this was manifested the love of God towards us in this what is in this he said, because that God sent his only begotten son into the war, that we, my word, live through him. So what John was saying is that when I am living through Christ, I am enjoying the manifestation of God's love. To John, love means is living through Christ. When you ask John, what is God's love to you? He will tell you, I am, Christ came, I've received him, I'm living through him every day, that is God's love to me. Now love means different things to different people. To children, their love is chocolate, or play, or games. To a woman, love is marriage, or children. Love means different things to different people. But to John, when he said, what is this love? He said, this love is manifested to me. I've received him. How do you know? I am living through Christ. I wake up today, my life is through Christ. I'm enjoying dominion. I'm enjoying breakthrough through Christ. How many believers can say that is a concept of God's love to them? 
There are so many believers today, their idea of God's love is still having marriages, having children, settlement, breakthrough. That's the idea of God's love. To some, ideas God's love is ministry growth, excellence. That's when to know God's love. But to John, God's love to me means I am living through this gift of Christ. I have understood Christ and I live my life through him. So, can you say that that is what God's love is to you? If you cannot say that, you haven't yet known this kind of love that we are talking about. And there are so many in the churches today, they have no knowledge of this love. All they know about love is what they read in soap opera. What their mother told them, their father told them. And the concept of divine love needs to be revealed. That's why this last month we focused on it. And I want to believe one of us here or two of us here have come to understand the depth, the real meaning of God's law. If you are that person, say amen. amen. The love of God has to be heard and felt and touched. It has to be heard. It has to be felt and touched. And therefore, let me now tell you three ways to know the love of God. What you need to know about the love of God. Remember, about love, we said you need to know. After you have known it, then you grow in it. Then you flow in it. Those are all the summary of love. You will know. But that foundational knowledge is where many are lacking. So they don't grow in love. They don't flow in love because they don't know it. So you will leave everything in a lack of knowledge of God's love. Now, three things to know about the love of God. Talking now about number one, the knowledge. Before we move into the growth and move into the flow. Three things to know. Say three things to know. Say three things to know. That number one, the heart of love. The heart of love. You don't even know it. You have it. You have to have the heart of love. That is your knowledge of that love. You have to have the heart H E A R T. You have to have it. That's when you know it. Number two, you got to know the power of this love. That when you come out, you, 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 you leave and say, This is love carrying me. You got to know the power of this love. And three, you got to know the character of this love. What's number one? The heart of love. Number two, power of love. Number three, the character. That's when you have known the love. You know the art of love. Let me say it again. Love is something that only lives in the heart. We have learned that it only lives in the heart, it's felt in the heart, it's art in the heart, it speaks from the heart. It doesn't live in your bones, on your body. It doesn't live on your mind. It lives in the heart. When God put love in you, when there's love in you, that love lives in the heart. So it's not just it grows in the heart and also flows from the heart. So take away the heart of a man. There is no way he can ever experience love. It is not possible to know love without your heart. That's why the enemy will do everything in this world to attack your heart. Because out of your heart is the beginning and the end of your life. That is everything starts from there. So you get to know the power of the heart in relation to the heart. That's what the devil is going for. And everything in the life is going for your heart. Take note. Love Every bad art, every bad art is an hindrance to the knowledge of love. 
Every bad art. If your art is bad, you find it very difficult to hear love, to feel love, to speak love. If your heart is not a good heart, you will not be able to understand or appreciate love. You cannot understand or appreciate love when the heart is damaged, when the heart is bad. Even when somebody is loving you, you will not even know love. The world today does not understand God's love. They cannot understand it. That's why every time God shows them love, they give the glory of his love to something else. They don't know it was God that is helping them, forgiving them while they are doing wickedness. They don't understand. They can't fathom it. They think everything they have is because of their knowledge it is the mercy of God. You will see somebody who is not even born again that God still saves from danger. Who has not even prayed at all. They didn't know. But when you say to him, he will say it's his Buddha. It's his days. It's my intelligence. Because he have a bad heart. You will never know love until your heart is changed. It's healed. Your heart is right. There is no way in this world you, you will always misunderstand love unless your heart is in the right place. If somebody even loves you, no matter how much they love you, if your heart is bad, you can't understand, you can't comprehend. And there are some hearts in this world that cannot even feel love. They can't give it. They cannot even feel it. They cannot even express it. They are cold. They are psychopath. They are sociopath. They don't know love. You can't love them. If you love them, they turn around and hurt you. Because love doesn't mean anything. They don't understand. They can't feel it. They don't know what it means. So for God to make you understand love, he has to do either replace your heart or repair your heart, give you a new heart. If there is no new heart, there is no way you will understand that love of God. And that is the reason why many believers today they don't go to God. They don't go to church. They have no fellowship because they don't understand. Because their heart is far from him. They don't have that heart. They, they, they only come to church, but they don't have the heart, new heart. You can no love. You will marry the wrong person. You will abuse those who are helping you because you don't know love. Because love to you is just eating, drinking, and playing and sex. Because you don't understand it. it. It takes a new art. Let me give you some scriptures why the art of man is so wicked. The Bible said the art of every man is desperately wicked. It said no man can know it. Look at Jeremiah 17 quickly. Verse 7 to 9. Verse 9. Jeremiah 17, 9 to 10. Let's all read together. Let's go. Are you there? The art is what? Above how many things? And desperately wicked. He said, who can know it? Verse 10. I, the Lord, search the art. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. The art of a man is desperately wicked, is deceitful, is deceitful, is deceitful. Don't be deceived by the dressing, by the coloring. What is in the art is what matters. It's not everyone one that is laughing with you is actually laughing with you or happy with you. Amen. It's not everyone that gives you that actually is giving you. It is not true. You got to know that the art is what makes a man. Look at Proverbs 26 and let's read from verse 24 and 25. Let's hurry up quickly. Proverbs 26. Say in the name of Jesus. 
I am blessed to have a new heart that can understand God's love. I'm blessed to have a new heart that can understand God's love. I know God's love. I understand it because of my new heart. Thank you, Jesus, for a better heart in Jesus' name. You must always be grateful for that gift of a new heart. That is A to Z of your Christianity. There are so many believers today that are still trying to run Christian life with a bad heart. You cannot reform it. You cannot socialize it. Once that heart is damaged and wounded and broken, it is wounded and broken. Replace it. May God give you a new heart in Jesus' name. Can I hear louder? Amen. Proverbs 26 verse 24. Let's go. He that ate it. Look at what he said. He that ate it, this he what? The same. He dissembled it with his what? Lips. lips. The lips are saying something else. I love you, I love you, but he ate. Hatred is where? In the heart. He that, he, he, he that ate it, dissembled it with his what? Lips. Why? Let's go. He layed up what they said within him. When he speaketh fear, when he speaketh what? Fear. He said, Believe him no, for there are seven words abomination in his head. In his head, in his head, in his head. That is where a lot of silly guests get deceived by very only speaking men who just want to sleep with them. I love you, I love you. They have no love in their heart for you. All they want is just to lay to them and to take you to bed and abuse your body. That will never be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Because love is of the heart. Like an, okay, yes, another, I want to. another person. Yeah. A hateful person. A hateful person. That's what? Disguises himself. He disguises himself. I don't know why I say himself, not herself. <laughs> he dis is, yeah. He disguises himself with his speech. With his speech. They cover was... up themselves with speech. So it's not everybody that say, oh, love, 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 love. We are family that believes it in their heart. Except a man or a woman who have a new heart. Because the heart of that man, no matter who they are, whether your father, your mother, they can betray you. Don't be deceived. We've asked stories all over the world. As long as your heart is not that new heart, it is vulnerable. Amen. That's why every child, everybody must be born again. And when you get born again, you receive a new heart, you protect it. Because that is the engine of your life. To enjoy life, you have to live in love. Without love, there is no life. And your heart is the engine room, the house room, the center of everything that has to do with your love. To find love, you got to dig deeper into your heart. Because that is the only time you can actually give, sacrifice, and forgive. You can never forgive unless your heart forgives. You can never really give unless your heart gives. You will give and you will complain and you cause trouble unless your heart is releasing somebody they are not released you can owe somebody for 20 years pretending you love them who oh, are forgiving you but I won't, but I won't forget it's a lie you've not forgiven if anything happens tomorrow you are going back to react the same story because your heart is holding bitterness that heart is wounded and broken but I pray for somebody today you will be healed by the love of God Amen. so you can enjoy life Amen. You can enjoy life. I don't joke with my heart because I know that is where love comes from. I know I can never love you without my heart. So why will I play with my heart? And I thank God for the gift of life because it comes from my heart. That's why today as I stand upon this altar, I give God praise and glory. I don't know a man in this world I cannot forgive because as soon as you are offending me, I am taking my heart to the Lord to purge it out. Amen. So I'm not living by your friends. I don't depend on say sorry. I'm the one that is watching my heart myself because I know the value of love. If there's no love in my life, I die. Amen. So I must guard my heart because love is life. Somebody say amen. amen. 
I can hear louder. Amen. Okay, what is uh, verse 26? Let's go. Whoso, what? Whose hatred is covered by what deceit is wickedness shall be shown before the whole congregation. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. A bad heart does not appreciate. They don't understand. They cannot. Sometimes they are not capable of feeling, hearing, or giving love. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. A, 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 the love of God comes with a new heart when you are born again. Romans chapter 5, verse 5, quickly. Romans 5, 5. Hurry up quickly, time is going. The love of God comes with a new heart when you are truly born again. I would like to say it's not everybody that goes to church that are genuinely born again. Born again is a spiritual experience. It's not a theory. It's something that takes place within you. It's after repentance. You can never get that out without repentance. It is impossible plus cannot. Unless it's a gift, it's after repentance. It's a gift of God. That's why everybody, it's not, pastors can't give it to you. Good music can't give it to you. That's why some people don't love church. They don't love the things. You cannot because it's from the heart. It's from the heart. There has to be, it has to be an operation, something done to you, and it can happen in a second, in a night. We have seen people who go, that they got saved in the, in the mosque, in the mosque. They got saved in the mosque. They got saved at Mecca. And there are many in church who are yet not saved. They sing well. They dance well. They are eager in church. But they still have the old heart. You cannot socialize it. It's not possible. It has to be an experience. When did you have that experience? When did you repent? When did you give your heart to Christ? It has to be a date, a time when you have that encounter. May God arrest your heart today and give you a new heart. It has to happen. And that is one of the things I fear in my life. Deceiving people, they are going to hell, to heaven, and from church go to hell. Because a lot of people in the church today who are carrying a thread all over the place, not love. And they are not Christians. But people clap for them. That is not your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Romans 5, chapter 5. Let's go. Hope make it not ashamed because what? The love of God is what? Shed abroad, make full and wide in our heart by the Holy Ghost that is given to us. So when you are born again, the love of God comes with a new heart. And that love has to grow and it has to flow. But it begins from the heart. It begins somewhere the in the air. There are many things in life that damages the heart. And I want you to know them. Number one is sin. Say sin. sin. Say sin. sin. Sin addends the heart. Sin addends the heart. Iniquity addends the heart. The more you live in sin, you are damaging your own life. Because sin will damage your heart. Number two are men. Men. When, men, when, you, are, when you go through disappointment, and you go through what I call betrayers men then your heart becomes colder your heart gets damaged by men and number three is the world the system of the world the culture of the world they teach you to just be entirely selfish and be mean and be wicked the world teaches you wickedness they smile when, when you're growing up as a child and somebody fall down, the boys will make mockery of it. As soon as you're in the midst of the boys who are making mockery, they make mockery of you when you, when you stumble. I saw a, a, a somebody stumble and all the boys around him started making mockery of him because, well, she stumbled. Somebody should go to help him or help, help her up, but nobody did because, well, it was fun. That is the way the world will teach you. As you get into that system of the world, your heart gets hardened. It will tell you greed is good. It will tell you how to make money by being mean. 
are to add it so the wall will damage your heart. And then the afflictions in the world. Afflictions, hardship, damages the heart. They get it wounded. They make it cold. They take away faith. They put in doubt. So you are going not to trust anybody but yourself. So you hear that from many people. I don't trust anybody. When it comes to money, I don't trust anybody. You hear that all the time. That is a language of a bad art. A very bad art. It's not the word of God. Then the devil will damage your heart. The devil does not only damage it. He wants to feel it. He wants to dump something in it. He wants to occupy it. You will see that in the book of Acts chapter 5. When Ananias and Sapphira lied, the response was, that, why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? Why did you allow Satan to fill your heart with lies? So Satan, devil, they hold the hearts, they fill the heart with lies, with wickedness, with evil ideas. They darken the heart. Then the world system will darken the heart or blind it completely. Or affliction will break it, will wound it to the extent that the only person you trust is nobody. Even some people don't even trust themselves. Talk less of trusting their spouse. They check the phone. They check everything. Every word they say, they don't believe. So when they come to church with that kind of a heart, there's no way you're going to ever believe a man, a pastor. You're going to be checking everything. The problem is not the pastor. It's your heart. Then the man, when you're in relationship, you're going to get disappointed and betrayed. What that does is that it affects your heart. It affects your heart. And then sin. When you indulge in sin, sin will harden your heart. The more you fornicate, the less you want to repent. Because you enjoy it. That enjoyment means sin is adding your heart. So you don't feel bad anymore. At first you feel bad. The second time you don't feel bad. And the more you do it, the more your heart gets hardened. Read Romans 7 for me quickly. Verse 11. And let's read also Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 18. And then Hebrews 3, verse 12 to 13. We're going to read all those three together so we can understand what are the enemies of our heart. So you will know what to do when you want to grow love. When you want to grow love, you have to put a barricade, a deliberate barricade against those enemies. You have to know it, identify it. You see when the word comes, when men comes, and when betrayer sets in, you have to work against it. If you allow those things to be in your heart, you can never grow in love. Write it down 10 million times. You are going to stagnate in love. If you allow those offenses to stay there, they will darken your heart. If you are always listening to the world, you are always in the world system, you will become an unbeliever. You will stop loving God, stop loving people. You will stop living like someone doesn't care. You will be so cold. There are even sons today that their father treated very well who ended up killing their father. Because why they had they went to school and they met with their own friends who taught them how to make money through insurance and they had become ardent. And this is a man, little boy that their father loved, but the boy's heart was hijacked by darkness. Evil will fill the earth. He filled Ananias' heart and suffered with lies. So those are the things you know, the enemies of love, enemies of heart, they are the enemies of love. So when you come by them, you will know how to deal with them. Because if you don't deal with them, the love of God in your heart will not grow. You will stagnate. There's no way love can pass through those gates of bitterness. So let's quickly read Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12 to 13. Hurry up quickly. Hebrews, Hebrews 3, verse 12 to 13. Let's go. Let's all reach church. He said, take, take it. it. What? Brethren, Brethren, let there be any of you have what? An evil heart. He said, take it. 
Take it means be careful. He's talking to believers who got a new heart. Who got a new heart? Ah, your heart would not become evil in Jesus' name. Amen. He said, Take it, brethren, let there be any of you who are among us here as fallen here. It will fall into this category. Ah, you will not be, you, that will never be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Take it, brethren, let there be any of you. And what? An, An evil, evil act of what unbelief, unbelief. in departing from the living Amen. God, in departing from the living God, in departing. Once your heart is overwhelmed with evil, you will depart. Either the world, either sin, either darkness have taken you out. Why are you not in church? I don't feel it anymore. No, 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 no. The problem is not the church. The problem is that you have been affected by one sin or the other. May God deliver you. Your heart he said but what let's all read together but what exalt one another read daily. loud but, but what exalt one, exalt another, one daily. another how many times daily. call somebody tonight before you go to bed exalt one I say spend an hour three hours with somebody yesterday almost an hour with somebody I, I, three people yesterday I spoke to because I saw how the devil was attacking their heart a man from America what are you doing your heart is going want to abandon everything ministries wives children how do you come here you don't feel God anymore your heart has been attacked. In the name of Jesus, you'll not be a victim in Jesus' name. Amen. He said, exhort one another daily. While it is called war today. Why? Do you have to keep sharing, loving each other, talking to one another. Because the devil, darkness, the world is there. Trying to seize your heart. He said, lest any of you be what? Hardened. Through what? The deceitfulness of sin. sin. Sin is so deceitful. Why? Because of the pleasure in it. The pleasure of sin is what deceives you. You think it's good. The people who are going to do things that are going to destroy them every time. There's not a single one that ever, ever, will never say, this is good for me. Every time they're going to make a choice to do anything, when you hear them say, the first thing they say to you, I've thought about it, I have prayed, this is what I feel is good, and I they don't know, they're just making the mistakes. That's why God sent prophets and teachers. So you can open your eyes. They shake on your flesh. It's eager to do something. Be careful. You have not prayed about anything. Be careful. There's some things you don't do unless God says do. No matter how you feel good about. Amen. Because the heart is extremely deceitful. Say in Jesus' name, my heart will not be caught. My heart will not be caught. And I hear a bigger amen. Amen. A louder amen. Amen. Ephesians 4. 17 quickly. Visions 4, 17. Hurry up, hurry up. I have just 11 minutes more. Hurry up, please. Let's all read. This I say therefore in the law that you henceforth walk, walk not as other Gentiles walk, walk in the vanity of their mind. Verse 18. Having the understanding darkened. Understanding darkened. Ah, your understanding will not be darkened. Amen. Understanding. You talk, 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 talk. They can't see. Understanding darkened. It is in the world. That's why they, you pray to some people. You say, can you not understand God's law? They can't understand it. They think it's all church. It's a waste of time. Organized religion. Wasting their time. They're not making money. They're suffering. Come on. I just pray somebody. I, I don't let me say it in Jesus' name. Amen. But I pray for many of the unbelievers that God Almighty will open their heart to receive God's love in Jesus' name. See, they are being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in there. Why was there ignorance? Why are they alienated? 
Why are they cut off? Why is your understanding darkened? Because of the blindness of their heart. Who was blinding the heart? What is blinding the heart? What is your eyes on? What are they going? And they don't even know that their target was their heart. And what that does that they can hear, they can understand. May every darkness in our heart give way to light of love in Jesus' name. Amen. I can hear your amen, church. Amen. 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 So it's the heart of love. And then you have to know the power of love. Then we learn throughout the month. Let me quickly enumerate the 10 power of love. If you are not enjoying this today, I believe in October, may you enjoy them in Jesus' name. Amen. Number one, love is the strongest force in the world. So, uh, Solomon 8-7, the Bible says love is strong as death. It says many waters cannot quench it. And in Romans chapter 8, it was 35 is a nothing is too strong in this world to separate us from the love of God. And number two, love is the reasons why salvation, healing, deliverance are given easily to us. Because of God's love, God delivers, God saves, God heals. I pray for somebody this month, even where you are, you will still experience the healing of God in Jesus' name. Love, Ephesians 3, 19. Love takes us into the fullness of God. It said that it said to know the love of God, which passeth knowledge, amen, that you might be filled in all the fullness of God. So the gateway to the fullness of God is love. Number four, healthy relationships, are established on love. One of the things that break relationship is called darkness. Darkness is the breaker of relationships. So when people are breaking up, darkness is working. That's why in First John chapter two, verse nine to eleven, you will hear he that hated his brother is in darkness still. He says in darkness, the hatred and darkness they go together anywhere you see hatred or confusion in any church darkness is there the antidote to that is love relationship will go south whenever love diminishes and number five in any relationship in anything that is dying love is a reviver love is a refresher love is a renewer it doesn't matter what you are going through. Once love is interjected, there is a renewal, there is a revival as restoration. If a relationship has broken down and they don't like to see each other again, once love comes back, they are coming back again. Love is the only thing that can bring two enemies together. Amen. Number six, love opens all doors. There are many things that open doors in the life in lives, but they are limited. When it comes to love, there is no door under the sun that love cannot open. It doesn't matter who the man is, whether king, king. Uh, uh, I mean, um, I mean, the door was open for Esther because of love. Love opens any door, any door, any door, any door. You can enter it. Once you go in love and the person loves you, they will receive you. In bank, this open all door. Anywhere I go to try and get people, I pray for love. I pray for doors to open by law. And I look into the eyes of people. If I don't see love in your eyes, I don't talk to you. But I see love in your eyes, I know there's the promise of God in you for me. Somebody say amen. And then number seven, law will motivate you. It enables you. It enables you. The Bible says we are constrained by love. We sacrifice by love. We give because of love. It is so hard to give and to share and to forgive and to serve unless there is love in your heart. If you want to enjoy what you are doing without stress, get some love. It enables, it motivates, it inspires. Number eight, 
Correction is easily admissible when it's done in love. Without love, correction is grievous. The person you are trying to correct will not understand you are loving them. They may even hate you or dislike you for telling them the truth because whatever you are telling them is not what matters. It's how you are telling them. Is it with love you are correcting or rebuke? If you rebuke somebody in love, they will hear you. They will understand you. Number, number nine, love destroys fears. Suspicion, paranoia, and distrust. In First John 4, 18, it says, Perfect love casts away all war fear. The word fear there is paranoia. It's suspicion, distrust. You cannot give, you can't so you are trying to want you can't trust. Your problem is love. When there is love, you believe, you trust easily. You find all that in First Corinthians 13. You see the nature of love. Love believeth all things. You are not gullible. But because you believe all things, you can never go down. There is no way you will go down or you will fail because love in itself protects you. Somebody say amen. They think they are cheating you. They are cheating themselves. Just keep loving. Number 10. Love makes your faith very effective and very strong. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 6, it said, love, I mean faith, work it by love. And then the third thing you got to know about love is the character of love. Number one, you need to know the knowledge of love is the art of love that you got to have it. Having it is the knowledge of it. Number two, the power of love. You have to experience it. Those are the 10 areas. If you have not yet experienced those, you are not yet enter the benefit of love. Love is very sweet. Love is good. It keeps relationship. It keeps home. It keeps family. It keeps everything going. You can go to a church of three people because of love. You can hit with a young woman because of love. You, don't, you can walk with anybody. You don't have, you are just free. You are just free because of love. You can give in because of love. Why are you giving ten thousand dollars because of love? Why are you giving hundred thousand because of love? And so it's, it's it's the best thing that makes you live. The power is so much. It heals. It saves. It delivers. It takes us to God's fullness. It opens all doors. It enables. It it makes correction easily accessible. It destroys fear, suspicion, all of this. Suspect one another. It's lack of love. Lack of love. Somebody in Jesus' name, I will enjoy the power of love all my life. And finally, character of love. Character of love. Let's all read together First John. First John chapter 4. Beloved, let us what? For love is what? Everyone that loveth is what? And knoweth God. Verse 8. He that love not does not know what, what does he know? He doesn't know God. Why? Because God is love. Look at your neighbor. He that loveth not, what does he know? Say, what does he know? He that loveth not, what does he know? He doesn't know God. Which means love is the nature, character of God. And if you are born by love, you are love yourself. Amen. Your character, your inner man is love. Your nature is love. There is nothing, you are born by love, that's who you are. God is love. He that love not does not know God. Knowing God means you are born of love. Verse 12 and verse 20 quickly. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God what dwelleth in us. And his love is what's perfected in us. I pray in the name of Jesus, the love of God shall be perfected in you today. Because your destiny is hanging on this truth. 
Things are going to turn around this month for you and your household this month in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Because God dwelleth in us because love is perfect. Love changes who you are. It changes your character. And all of that you see in Galatians chapter 5. All the character of love. Kindness. Gentleness. Meekness. Godliness. They are all nature of God. That's what love turns into. Love changes your personality. So if you have not known this character of love, you don't know love. That's why today we started by tasting the kindness of God. He that showed mercy will obtain mercy. Amen. You are merciful. You are kind. You are gentle. Because God dwells in you. Because what? God dwells in you. Love dwells in you. So love produces himself. The love in you produces love. So whatever is happening in the body of Christ today is not of God. When pastor attack pastor, where is the love of God? There are some things you cannot do when you are in love. When love has changed your person, if, you have, if love haven't changed you now, your character, you are still yet to know the, the love of God fully. Maybe you are changed to a little degree, but you need to still say, Lord God of heaven, make me know love. Amen. Because you have got to know the depth of it, the breadth of it, the length of it. And you can never stop knowing God's love in Jesus' name. Stand to your face, Heavenly Father. Raise your say, Heavenly Father. Father. I open my heart to know this love. Know this love. To know the power of love. To know the power of love. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I receive the heart of love. I receive the heart of love. I receive the power of love. I receive the power of love. I receive the character of I love. Receive I receive the character of love. I will grow in 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 love. I will flow 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 in love. Whatever will hinder me from growing in love. Lord Paul Jita. Whatever will hinder the flow of love. From me to others. From me to others. Lord Paul Jita. Lord, may I know this love. May I know this Christ. Let it change my personality. May I taste the power of love. Every day. Healing by love. Restoration by love. May I have the heart of love that can forgive as Christ forgives. That can share as Christ shares. Oh Lord, may I be able to say, I have known God. I know Lord. I'm living it. I am Lord. Like my Father. In the name of Jesus. If there's anything I mean, it's September. Concerning this mystery. Oh Lord, let the love of God be perfected in me. In the month of October. Love of God. Love of God. Rise in me. Rise in me. Rise in me. Make a way for me. Teach me. Help me. Connect me. Guide me. Lead me. Cover me. Oh, love of God. Oh, love of God. May I live by you. May I live by Christ. May I never be separated from you, Lord. My heart is protected. My heart is guided. I will grow in love. I will maintain connection. I will maintain connection. Because of love. In the name of Jesus. Whatever culture, whatever distance, whatever distance, whatever separation or division that want to hinder me from growing in love, let fire purge them out of my destiny. Lord, let love flow today. Today. In the name of Jesus. May I live above. May I live above.
above myself. May I recognize something bigger than myself in the name of Jesus. Let love flow to this neighborhood in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord of Lord. Just print on that now. Print on that now.